Now in this video, we're gonna talk about a method called the preceding and following interval method. And that's a method to find the slope of the tangent that we discussed in the video before. So let's start off with an example. What is the instantaneous rate of change of f of x equals x squared at x is equal to two? Notice how I put at x equals two because remember instantaneous rate of change happens at only one point. So drawing this out, this is x squared here. And let's say that this point is x is equal to two. So at an x value of two, we would have a y value of four. Let's pretend that this is like really zoomed in. So we need to find the slope of the tangent, which is the same as the instantaneous rate of change at an x value of two. So one way that we can do that is we can pick a point that's really close to two from the left side. So let's say we pick a point x is equal to 1. Now that's not fairly close. We could pick a point like 1.9 that would be closer to 2 but let's just start off with 1 just for simplicity. So if we pick a point close quote unquote 1 to 2 this uh, this x value would be 1. The y value would be 1 right because 1 squared is 1. And if we find the slope or the average rate of change, the slope of the secant between these two points, we can get pretty close to approximating what the slope of the tangent would be at x is equal to 2. So since we're finding the instantaneous rate of change at an x value of 2, since we picked a point that's pretty close to it before it, so to the left of it, this would be called the preceding interval, the interval between x is equal to one and x is equal to two. And remember, we're finding the instantaneous rate of change at x is equal to two. So if we pick a value that's close to it, that's smaller than it, that would be called the preceding interval. So if we find the slope or the average rate of change for the preceding interval, we know that the y value at an x value of one for this function is one and the y value at an x value of two is four. So the average rate of change, sorry. So the average rate of change for the preceding interval would be y two minus y one, so four minus one, which is three, two minus one, which is one, so it would just be equal to three. Now let's do the same thing, but let's pick a point that's greater than two, that's close to it. So a really close point would be 2.1, but let's use a whole number three, just for simplicity in this example. So an x value of three would give us a y value of nine, right? Because three squared is equal to nine. So what if we find the slope of the secant between these two points here? So the average rate of change between x is equal to two and x is equal to three. So remember, we're finding the instantaneous rate of change at x is equal to two. And now that we pick this interval with a point that's greater than two, that's close to it, three, that's called the following interval. So if we find the average rate of change for the following interval between two and three, we know that uh, at an x value two, the y value is four. That's where we're finding the instantaneous rate of change. And then at an x value three, the y value is nine. So finding the average rate of change or the slope of the secant between those two points, we end up getting five. Now notice how the slope of the secant for the preceding interval between x is equal to one and x is equal to two is a lot less steep than the slope of the secant for the following interval between x is equal to two and x is equal to three. And that's just because of this function. It's always increasing, so the slope of the tangent will always be increasing the further out you go in terms of the x values. So the slope of the actual tangent at an x value of two, the steepness of it is somewhere in between this slope and this slope. So what we can do to approximate it even better is we can average out the average rate of change for the preceding interval or the slope of the secant for the preceding interval 
and the slope of the secant for the following interval. The average of those would give us a good approximation at an x value of 2, what the slope of the tangent is. So taking the slope of the secant line for the preceding interval and the following interval and then averaging them out. So we add them, divide them by two, we would get an approximate slope of the tangent, I should write here at x is equal to two of four. And notice this word I included, approximate. We, uh, we don't know whether the slope of the tangent is exactly four, but we can be pretty, uh, pretty confident that it's close to four. Now, Again, as I mentioned before, 1 and 3 are points that are sort of far from 2. You can use even closer points, so the preceding interval could have been from like 1.9 to 2, and then 2 to 2.1 for the following interval, and that would give you an even better approximation. But I just use 1 and 3 for simplicity's sake. So just to give a conclusion or a set of steps for the preceding and following interval to find the instantaneous rate of change at an x value of a. So the first step is you find the average rate of change for the preceding interval from x is equal to a and x is equal to a minus h, where h is just some small value. So that's this step here, finding the average rate of change for a preceding interval. Second step, find average rate of change for the following interval with x is equal to a and x is equal to a plus h, where h is some small value. So that's this step here between x is equal to 2 and x is equal to 3. So notice here the difference between these was 1, so our h value was 1, but that's a pretty big h value. I would recommend using 0.1 usually. Again, we just use a larger one in this example to use whole numbers for simplicity. So once you got those two average rate of changes for the two intervals, you average them out to get an approximate instantaneous rate of change at the x value of a. In the next example, we'll go over a word problem and I'll use this uh, method, the preceding and following interval method, to find the instantaneous rate of change.